I'm down to my last big project on this car as far as sheet metal goes. And what I'm gonna do is uh, replace the roof skin. This is a factory sunroof car, and over time it developed a leak, just like a lot of them do. So um, I'm not really a sunroof or a T-top fan. So I went ahead and found a donor vehicle, but just a regular roof on it, and I cut that off. And uh, I will take the skin off that and put it on here. So that's the plan. Let's get started. Before I start cutting the roof skin off the car, I needed to go around the car in a few areas and make some fitment notes and also take some measurements. So when I put the new roof skin on, it goes on the car the same way that this one was on. Um, like for example, one area where I measured up front is I measured from this uh, front corner of the cowl panel up to this edge right here. Since this is a fixed point, I'm able to measure back here. When I put the new roof skin on, I'll be able to adjust it and uh, make sure that I'm getting the same reading on the new one as I am on this one. And I did that on uh, both sides right here and right here on the front. And I will uh, take you around the back of the car and show you what, uh, what I did back there. And then also uh, while I was doing that, I was also uh, making some diagrams and uh, taking notes. So uh, that way if I have any question about anything, I can just refer back to my notes. So uh, let's go look at some other parts of the um, car and uh, you can get an idea of what I did in these other areas. What we're looking at here, um, this area right here, this is where the roof skin overlaps the quarter panel. So what I did for a quick visual reference is I just took a silver Sharpie since my car is black and I kind of drew an outline on this piece right here. Um, and then another thing that I did is I took a measurement from here and I measured down to there and I made note of that. So when I go um, to fit the roof skin on the car, when I'm working in this area right here, uh, I know that uh, between this and my uh, measurement here, I know how the original roof fit on the car and I can get the uh, replacement roof to fit in the same manner. So just a simple measurement and a quick visual reference and that should uh, really help as far as fitting the, uh, the new roof onto the car. Another area where I uh, took some measurements is in the back uh, where the hatch bolts onto the car. Um, so what I did is I just took a simple measurement from this edge here of the roof skin back to uh, this lip where the uh, weather strip would go on the car and I just recorded that and then I just made a little diagram of it in my notes and included that measurement there in my notes also in case for some reason that measurement gets lost. Um, I did the same for the middle of the car in this area and also on the driver's side. So again, just a nice simple measurement and uh, a quick little drawing as reference to go along with it. Okay, so another uh, thing that I wanted to, to make sure that I took notes on is how the factory uh, applied their seam sealer. Because I want to make sure when I seam seal this, that I seam seal it the way that they did it originally. So all I did is I took some measurements and I made a, uh, basically like a template. Just took a piece of cardboard or whatever and I made a template of how the factory seam sealed that area. So that way when I put the car back together and I go to seam seal it, I know that I will have done it the same way that the factory did it originally. What we're looking at, um, this is the area of the car on the A-pillar where the A-pillar and the roof come together. And you can see the factory uh, welds the roof skin on right there. Uh, this area is pretty deep and what the factory will do to finish it out is just glob a bunch of filler inside of here and sand it out and finish it out and call it good and send it on its way. What I'm going to do after i all done welding this is I'm going to weld a, a filler strip of metal in there so that way when I go to do my finished body work hopefully it'll just need a light skim coat of filler and um, I'll be all set. Because what happens the way the factory does it over time is these cars are prone to flexing and uh, it cracks it in here. A lot of times you'll see it and then you'll see that filler uh, popping out or 
you'll even see uh, moisture can get in there and then it'll start to rust. So uh, I definitely want to avoid that issue. So that's what I'm going to do when I uh, go to finish this is just weld a filler strip in there and then hopefully just skim coat it with filler and call it good. All right, so what I did here is I sanded the paint off the car in this area. Uh, this area is where the roof and the quarter panel transition into each other. Um, underneath this lead type filler is the seam where the uh, roof is welded over the top of the quarter panel. So the reason I have these lines on here is since bodywork really isn't my um, area of expertise, I just wanted a visual representation of where the majority of my filler should be. Uh, I may have to go a little bit higher and a little bit lower, but for the most part, this is where the majority of the filler is from the factory. And I wanna make sure I replicate that as much as possible. Uh, I don't wanna be that guy that just puts a ton of Bondo on it and then I gotta sand most of it back off because I use too much. Um, and these lines carry over here um, behind where the sail panel goes. So that way when I'm sanding this and I sand my lines off, I still have a general um, representation to go off of because like I said, I'm not really a body work guy. So this is just a visual aid for me for when I'm doing the finished body work on the car. I don't get too crazy just putting a ton of Bondo in this area unnecessarily. So that's it. Okay, I'm finally ready to uh, cut the roof skin off the car. I got all the filler out on the other side of the car and the seam sealer um, on the opposite side, opposite corner. Uh, so my plan is to, I'm going to make my cut line as close as I can to this right there where it folds over. And uh, I'm also just going to cut straight across here for now. And then I'm going to follow this edge right here where this edge stops and then goes in, in that direction. I'm gonna cut as close as I can to that. All the way down, you can see the spot welds. It's gonna be quite a few spot welds to have to mess with. Um, and then you can uh, see my cut line here and I'll go across the front the same way. The reason I'm doing that is I wanna get the majority of the metal off the car. And then when I go back to do the uh, detail work, it'll be easier just having to mess with a little bit of metal than having you know a larger piece of metal i have to screw with so that's why i'm doing it that way um i am not gonna miss this sunroof whatsoever i've been waiting a couple years to do this so i'm pretty excited to get uh get this cut off and start fitting the new roof on the car so all right let's get set up and let's start cutting Okay, guys, I wasn't able to get any footage of me actually um, cutting the roof off of the car. Um, I did get it cut off. I just kind of followed my cut lines around like I was had talked about earlier, and it came out great. Went really well. Um, so now I'm at the uh, stage where I'm having to kind of just trim up the peripheral stuff that's left behind. So you can see here I've um, got this part of the roof cleaned up uh, where it where the roof overlapped. And uh, all I did to get it apart is I took my little uh, Eastwood mini belt sander and I just basically sanded over the spot weld. I kind of went around the um, outer circumference of the spot weld and for lack of a better term, kind of burned through the material. And you'll, you'll be able to see when you're doing this you'll start to notice where the material around the spot weld is getting thin. So um, once you do that, and I, I would do about six spot welds at a time. And then I would come in with my uh, vice grips, get a good bite on the sheet metal and just kind of roll it. 
And if you did a good job cutting, sanding through your spot welds, it pretty much almost just unrolls right off the car. So uh, that worked out really well. Um, I was able to do all down the side of the car where, um, where that molding goes. That uh, trim molding on some cars is like a bright aluminum or stainless on uh, like the 85, 86 GTs, maybe some of the earlier models too. Uh, this molding right here is blacked out. But uh, anyways, so I was able to just go all the way down here, started at the back, just made my way. I was just very careful, didn't get too crazy. And uh, the sander did a really nice job of, of just kind of attacking the outside metal. And uh, once I, like I said, kind of burned through the top layer of metal, uh, it came right off. So let me uh, get a close up here of some of these other areas where uh, the sheet metal is a little more delicate and you can see how nice of a job that sander did. Okay, so you can see right here, you have this uh, single layer of metal. Um, it's kind of like a flange. Um, and uh, again, just by using the belt sander, and just going over each of the spot welds. And in case you're wondering, there's about 30 spot welds end to end. And I've done both sides of the car, so I'm up to 60 spot welds already. I'm gonna keep track of how many spot welds actually hold the roof panel on these cars in case anybody's curious. But um, like I said, I just went along this area here, went along here very carefully, and uh, just burned through the, the top layer of the spot welds. And then that remaining uh, pieces of metal that were on there just came right off. So uh, I'll show you, you can see evidence of where my sunroof had been leaking on some of this uh, substructure here. Let me get the camera off the mount here and I'll show you that. I've already uh, wire wheeled this area, but when I pulled uh, the skin off, it was it had a fair amount of rust in there, but fortunately it cleaned up pretty easy with a wire wheel. Uh, the passenger side is real clean in this area, so obviously I had a leak on this, which I knew. Um, besides the driver's side seat being wet, the floor was rotted out on this side, so that was pretty much a dead giveaway. But fortunately, um, it didn't really cause any uh, major damage. Uh, I think I'm just going to be able to clean it up with a wire wheel, and then it will be uh, good to be coated with some paint so I don't have any more rust issues, and I'll be all set. Okay, so this is some of the uh, remaining material for the uh, sheet metal flange that goes around the uh, where the top of the windshield and the roof come together. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna uh, take my sander and uh, kind of go through some of these spot welds and show you just how uh, nice of a job this sander does without uh, damaging the metal underneath. Okay, so you can uh, see where it's burning through the uh, spot welds like I talked about. You can see these uh, circular lines. So it doesn't take very long. And uh, I'll go ahead and peel this up. And you can see it, it's, uh, it comes apart pretty easily now. So I just take my screwdriver, kind of get back in behind here. Kind of work each one of the spot welds a little bit. This 
Just kind of work it back and forth a little bit. And you can see it, it lifts right up. It, see the two pieces of metal are separating. So just um, take a gentle hand. You don't have to go at it. Um, you know, like a maniac, just work it back and forth around where the spot welds are, help loosen them up a little more. And uh, it usually just pretty much comes right apart. So I know there's other methods out there that work. I've tried them and they do, but uh, I really like this method. Gonna take my uh, cutoff wheel and just do a quick slice and dice right here. That's just gonna give me some help in kind of starting our tail here. There we go. So as you can see, it pulls it right out. You can get it, you can pull it right off. And uh, what you're left with, I'll show you something here. Let me take the uh, camera off the stand again. I want to show you something. Okay, so what you're left with, once you do that, is uh, like a little, kind of a little nub. And you might just have to take the sander and knock it down a little bit just to smooth it out. Don't go crazy trying to grind it flat and all that. You know, just smooth it out, you know. You don't want to really feel any high spots when, you, when you're going over it with your finger because your roof skin is going to uh, sit on top of that. And if you have a lump underneath here, when you put them together, you're going to have a lump, which you might end up getting a water leak. So just get it as smooth as you can, but don't go too crazy because it is only about 40,000 thick sheet metal. So if you grind this too thin, when you go to weld everything back together, you're going to burn through it. So, but, uh, that's it. I mean, I'm going to continue on this and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Okay, I got the last remaining pieces of the uh, front, the old sheet metal from the uh, original roof skin removed. Everything looks really good. I do have some pitting in here that was underneath that, but um, it's nothing that's going all the way through and the sheet metal is still really solid. So I was real happy to see that. And the flange is in good shape. Um, I had just a couple little spots. I think I had three uh, spot welds that pulled through um, to the under under uh, layer but otherwise everything looks really good I did hammer and dolly the flange a little bit just to help straighten it up in some spots and when I fit the new roof I will also uh, hammer and dolly everything again to get it nice and straight uh, the passenger side is was real clean underneath so I was real happy to see that so and also uh, between the two um, side pieces and this front piece the spot weld count is up to 93 Okay, so now I'm going to move to the back, and once I get that done, the car will be ready for me to install the uh, new roof. Um, I'm not going to show doing this last part because it's basically a, a repeat of the front, but one thing I wanted to point out, you can see this is on an angle. It's not uh, perfectly 90 degrees. And what's happening is, is I'm not able to keep my belt sander in here tight enough to get some of these the spot welds to grind them down. So I'm going to have to take a hammer and just hammer this back to uh, stand it more upright or even lean it forward a little bit. So that way I can get in there with the belt sander and get to those spot welds. So um, I just wanted to point that out.
Okay, so I got the last uh, remaining bits and pieces of the original roof off the car back in this area. Um, I didn't film it because if you saw how I did the front, then then you know how I did how I did it. I'm removing the back, so same uh, procedures and techniques uh, I used on the back that I used on the front. So and you saw all that. Um, I have to now uh, go about metal prepping all of this uh, structure that the roof skin covers. I want to put a coat of paint on it and uh, seal some rust in a few areas. And then I will start dissecting the donor roof and get that ready, um, get that removed from its structure and get it moved over here onto this so I can start fitting it and uh, getting that installed on the car and getting this project wrapped up. So uh, this is where we're at on it so far. We're making great progress. I'm really happy. And uh, I probably only have not even a day's worth of work into the into this project so far. Hey you guys, I just wanna show you real quick how I go about um, removing this filler material in the car where the quarter panel and the roof come together. So all I use is a propane torch and a wire brush and a rag, and it does a good job of uh, cleaning that material out. So. I don't want to apply heat up in here because I don't want to warp the panel because this material is thinner up in here. So I can just grind that part out. But this is where it's the thickest is right in here. So I'm going to have to heat that with a torch and that will allow that stuff to melt right out. And then I can clean it up with a with a grinder or sander later. But uh, so anyway, so I'm going to time lapse uh, the next part so you can see what's involved in, in melting out that material. Okay, so um, that was time-lapsed, but as you can see, it didn't take much effort and it didn't take very long to uh, get the old material out. And then you could see there's a spot wall here, 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 and probably one more underneath there somewhere if I dig around a little bit. But uh, So that's pretty much it. I just wanted to go over this real quick with you and show you what it takes to get that material out of each corner of the roof where it meets the, uh, the rest of the car. Okay, guys, real quick, um, I talked earlier in the video about wanting to metal tree all of this inner structure. So what I did is I went down to my local hardware store, and I got this paint. It's called Rust Stop. It's an oil-based satin enamel. Um, it's black satin, and you can use it on uh, clean metal, painted metal, rusty metal. Um, all I did is I uh, hit this with a wire brush real quick in a few spots to clean it up, and then I just used a uh, foam brush. To apply it and I just got the brush soaked with paint and uh, spread it around and dabbed it into the nooks and crannies and stuff I got great coverage with it it dries out really nice so I'm really happy with that so I did all around the whole perimeter of the inner structure and then also what I did all around the flanges where the roof welds on is I used this uh, weld through primer that I got I think uh, from Amazon it's made by SEM. I've used it before. It's uh, called Zinc Weld. It works really good. And uh, I sprayed that all around the, uh, the perimeter. So that way, once I weld the roof skin on, I don't have to worry about it rusting or anything like that. So, so I just wanted to go over that real quick because I mentioned it earlier and show you what I did end up doing with that. Okay, you guys. Um, just a quick update. I ended up having to go and get another donor roof for the car. Um, what happened with the original donor roof is once I got it on the car and tried to start fitting it, um, I got the paint stripped off. It got it down to bare metal and I found a bunch of damage. Uh, it looked like maybe the car had suffered some hill damage or something like that. And, that, and um, fixing it was really kind of out of um, out of my skill set. So I didn't want to try to have to skim coat it uh, with body filler and then long board it to get it flat and straight. So I figured for me in my case, since that type of body work really isn't my uh, forte, I would be better off to try to find a, a nicer roof. And I did. Um, the, the roof itself is perfect on this car almost. It's almost 100% perfect. So uh, whatever little issues that I have with it, I can fix myself. So 
Um, one issue that I had is it did have rot in the upper corner of the windshield and the A pillar, which a lot of them do on both sides. So um, all is not lost with the original donor roof. I'll be able to scavenge those sections off of that, use them on here, and I'll be able to fix that with no problem. So um, I'm going to uh, pull the camera off the stand and I'll show you some stuff I got going on. Okay, so I've got the uh, roof skin set in place and um, I checked my measurements going off of um, from the original roof skin and my measurement here in the middle and on the other end all came out exactly the same. So I went ahead and clamped the uh, roof skin in place and I also uh, drew some Sharpie lines right here in the middle and on the other end just to help, uh, you know, lining it up, getting it close for visual reference and um I always check my final measurements with a tape measure before I lock anything down. But uh, so that's where I'm at. The back is lined up. And now I can go ahead and go up to the front of the car and I can start uh, working on my uh, corner pieces that I have to patch in off of the other uh, donor roof for the rust repair that I was dealing with. So, but just wanted to show you that. So far, so good. Everything's lining up great in the back. All right, uh, the big day is finally here. Today, we are welding the roof skin. There's a couple things I wanna uh, talk about, and then uh, we're gonna put the skin back on the car and clamp it down and start welding it. Okay, just a couple things real quick. Uh, this uh, is, is a uh, cross brace, and also the dome light mounts to the bottom of it. And this uh, spans the width of the car, and um, what it does is it provides a little support for the roof skin so you can't push it down like an oil can. This doesn't go completely up against the bottom of the roof. What the factory does is they use kind of like a spray foam uh, filler and they put it in here and that uh, fills that tiny little gap between uh, the top side of this and the underside of the roof skin. And um, you know, I'm sure it's probably for vibration uh, too. And then... Um, up front, what they do is the same thing. They have this brace here that uh, runs and supports the front of the roof and does the same thing. And they use that foam sealer. Um, now, what I did on the front is I just went to the hardware store and I got a roll of uh, like the peel and stick door weather strip. And I use that and that works good on the front. Gives a nice fit. Now, I can't use the same stuff here because it's too thick. And what it does is... Um, it wants to push the back of the roof up. You know, you know, the roof can't lie completely flat. So I'm going to take some uh, caulk style 3M like seam seal, and I'll just run a couple of nice uh, thick beads across the top here. And then when I clamp the roof down, it'll kind of squish it down. And now these will kind of all bind to each other and that'll help uh, with the vibration and, and give that roof the support. So you can't push it down real easy in the middle. So um, I believe there's some in the back also. So maybe I'll put a couple dabs along here too, just for good measure. But uh, that's basically, I just want to go over that real quick. Um, like I said, you can get that foam sealer. Um, I, I guess maybe it's like a spray sealer. Um, but I, I just went this route. I kind of had this stuff already. And this stuff was cheap. So that's what I'm doing as far as that goes. So I just wanted to point that out before I put the roof skin back on and you wouldn't be able to see it after that. So, all right, let's get going. smear this stuff so I'm trying to be as careful as I can making sure it's going on the right way first time
These are just some inexpensive Harbor Freight clamps. Go back and um, this little mark here, I got marked on the other side and uh, my other areas where I marked it off. Um, I'll go back and double check my measurements and I'll I'll uh, check the fitment of my windshield molding, that sort of thing before I uh, do all my final welding, so. This is a clamp that I got from Eastwood and it's, uh, I got it with one of their spot weld kits. So how this works is um, like these are your holds for your spot weld. So you just kind of clamp it on there like that and then go ahead and weld that spot weld, then move it over. Um, it just gives you a nice tight fit and then your spot weld would be right in the middle of that. So like I said, it just clamps on like that. Just checking my reference marks back here. Perfect, so far so good. Looks good. Lines up right with what I uh, drew on my uh, my diagram that I did. Perfect, perfect match. Okay, um, in order to verify the fit of the upper windshield molding across here, what I had to do is uh, put a tack weld like in each corner on both sides because with the clamps on there uh it wasn't allowing me to be able to get the molding in there so i put a quick tack on it on each side and took it off and the molding fits fits uh, pretty good i mean really no complaints so um i have a I have to body work each one of these corners so i'll put the molding on and when i uh put the filler on there i can uh, kind of finish it off and make it look nice so or at least as nice as I can get it. I'm I'm not a body man, so. Uh, but otherwise, the the fit for the upper windshield molding looks good. I'm happy with it, so I can now definitely proceed with final welding the roof on. All right, here we go. Okay, y'all. Uh, one last thing before I get started. When I go to do my welding, I'm gonna jump from side to side. And I'll probably go in like a crisscross pattern. Um, I'm going to leave all these clamps in place. And then I will use this clamp. I'll move it around. And as I go to each spot weld, I'll, I'll, clamp, uh, I'll clamp it down with these. Do that spot weld. Cool it with some air. Move to the other side of the car. Kind of do the same thing. And like I said, I'll try to do like an X pattern. Um, I don't want to weld too much in one spot because I don't want to pull the metal around. It's... it's pretty thin metal and it, it moves around a lot when you try to weld on it if you're not too careful so so that's the plan I'm going to time lapse this part because I can't think of anything less interesting than watching me spot weld like 120 freaking spot welds or whatever is on this thing so I'll uh, I'll time lapse it and maybe I'll stop in between and uh, if there's something I think I need to mention but uh, otherwise I, I'm going to fire up the welder and uh, we're going to put this baby on
Well, that's it for right now because I'm out of welding wire. My God, this is tedious. Holy crap. We're getting there, but I'm about an hour and a half into it, and it's tedious. That's all I'm going to tell you. I'm real close to wrapping this project up. Uh, I got about 90% of the welding done. Everything's done in front and on the sides of the car. It's just uh, some finish work in the back, and then uh, we'll be all done. So, um, so what I've got done in the front is I welded in my uh, filler pieces where there was that uh, that gap where the, the roof and the A-pillar came together. So fortunately, I had an old section of A-pillar laying around, so I was able to cut my filler pieces out of that, get them welded in and ground down and stuff. So came out good, happy with that. I'm happy with the way the drip moldings are fitting on the car. Uh, the louvered side panels in the back are, uh, are, you know, I'm happy with the fit on those. So everything's going good. I just have some uh, finished welding to do in the back. But the front is done. So we're going to move towards the back. And we're going to get that wrapped up. And then we can go into uh, body working uh, the corners of the car. So it's going good. It's going good. I'm happy. Finally got, got rid of that sunroof that I've hated since the day I bought the car. So, all right, cool. All right, getting down to the uh, last little bits of welding, and then then the welding will be all done. Uh, so on both sides of the car, I have to weld in here. I have to weld right in here, and I have to weld here where the roof skin wraps around. Um, once I do that, I will make a filler piece to go in here um, to fill up that, that joint where the factory just globbed in all of whatever filler they use, some kind of solder or whatever. Um, and then that way I should only require a thin skim coat of filler to finish that off. Then I'll uh, seam seal all inside this area here, going all the way across to the other side of the car, paint it, and that'll be it. We'll be done. So um, not much left to do. It's cold here this morning. It was uh, 30 degrees in the garage, so I'm going to get the heater fired up get the welder fired up and we'll get this burned in and call it done. Okay, this side's done. Got uh, everything welded, got my filler piece in, it's all welded, got um, the weld smoothed down. It's ready for filler. I'm gonna move over to the other side, do the same thing over there. Then I'll pull the hatch off and I'll paint and seam seal all inside there and uh, it'll be ready for uh, finished body work. All right, I'm going to end the video here. There's a few uh, little detail items that I still have to take care of, uh, but basically I, I'm done. So I will um, move into body work in the two rear corners where the roof and quarter panel come together, and I'm not going to get into that on a video because I'm not a body man. So if you want to learn how to do stuff like that, jump on somebody else's channel and see how they do it. I'm sure there's a million people out there that are way better at that stuff than I am. So, and you can learn way more from them than you're going to learn from me. So, but uh, if you've made it all the way through the video, you made it this far, God bless you, man. Thanks for legging it out. Um, I'm glad this project is done. I, I'm glad I did it, but holy cow, I think this project took a couple years off my life. So, and I know I've got some gray hairs from it too. So, um, thanks for watching the video. Appreciate you know, legging it out. Hopefully, um, I was able to teach you something. I learned a few things myself along the way, too. So, And I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. Like I said, especially just for being some guy in his backyard doing this. Um, never done anything like this before, and I really couldn't be any happier with how it turned out. So, All right. So um, get out to the garage. Work on your car. You can do this stuff if you just set your mind to it. Take your time, gather as much information as you can if you're not knowledgeable on it, talk to people, all that stuff. 
But uh, like I said, I just took my time. That was the biggest thing. I did not want to get in a rush and screw anything up. So uh, if that's the one takeaway that I can give you out of this. If you want to do it, you probably can do it. Um, but just take your time. Don't get in a rush because once you wall it on, it's permanent. So it's got to be right. So, all right. Well, again, thanks for watching and I uh, appreciate the support. And um, good luck with your project. Get out in the garage and get working on your stuff, man. All right.